We have to talk a little bit about fitness because that's a big component of what you teach and your personal story being an example. So can you talk to us a little bit about, you know, I mean, I, people, if you're just, you know, watching this or listening to this on, on the podcast, like you're not seeing it on YouTube, we'll probably insert a picture to show how fit Muzumil is. But like, you're a perfect example that you can build muscle, you can maintain muscle with plants. So give us some insight into your journey and, and maybe some break some of the myths about protein, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. Um, yeah, there's this general, general perception that you need to be eating animal products to build muscle mass um, or that if you try the other way, you need a lot of supplements. And n none of that is true because you're, when it comes to your muscles, they don't care where your protein is coming from, one. And people don't realize that we don't actually even need as much as they think we need. Um, so the first point, all your muscles or all your body cares about in regard to protein is getting its essential amino acids. A lot of people think that plant proteins are incomplete proteins. And that myth has been debunked by science decades ago, long time ago. Um, the only true incomplete protein is gelatin, which is an animal product. Uh, all the essential amino acids are found in plants. Yes, different plants have varying amounts of different essential amino acids in different quantities. But that is no different than different food products having different amount, amounts of vitamins and minerals. You don't try to get all your vitamin C from one food and all your zinc from one food and all your iron from one food. You eat a variety of foods and you get, them from, you, know, you get them in different amounts and your body accumulates them, stores them, uses them as needed. It's no different when it comes to essential amino acids. Your body's smart. It stores whatever is needed. It uses, it recycles, it reuses, whatever it, it is required. So you don't need to worry about uh, complete protein and complete protein. You don't need to worry about combining meals uh, or any of that. Um, just know that all the protein initially comes from plants. That's how animals got it. So by skipping the animal portion, you're skipping so many other things like saturated fat and things like that. Um, and then the second point being people are over consuming on protein. The general public is eating way more protein than it needs. Um, there was a study done that found that people are eating uh, two to three times of protein that they need. And vegans even were eating, I, I believe, or more than 70% of the protein they need. Everyone's over consuming on protein. When you are just living a healthy life, um, you don't really care about building too much muscle mass, you're active, but, you, but you know, you're uh, living a normal life, you only need about 0 0.8 grams uh, per kilogram. And that, by some, many scientists, have been said that that might be higher than what you actually need because some, some blue zones don't even consume that much and they're still living long without disease. But if, even if you were to aim for that, you still don't need to worry about it. If you're eating a variety of foods, you would be able to get sufficient. If you're trying to build muscle mass, the amount you need is still a lot less than what people think. People are eating two to three times their body weight um, in pounds. I don't even know how they do that. Um, what you truly need uh, when it comes to... So there was a meta-analysis done that looked at how much protein you need uh, for athletes. What they found was for endurance athletes, it was it kind of maxed out at 1.2 to 1.4 grams per kilograms. And when it came to bodybuilding, it maxed out at 1.6. No benefit was found past that 1.6 grams per kilogram point. There was a range from like 1.0, uh, 1.2 to 1.6. And the, the reason there's a range is because it depends on your body, it depends on the exercise you're doing, the intensity, the frequency, the, hence the range. Um, so you can kind of figure out what's best for you, but anything beyond 1.6, you really don't need. And when you go over it, you are sacrificing on other foods. People don't realize that, that they, it, they, they're like, oh, I'll take the extra protein to be safe. Okay, but what about the safety in regards to other nutrients, in regards to fiber, in regards to uh, antioxidants, minerals, vitamins, things like that? You're sacrificing something. So there's no need to go over that. Um, Meta-analysis that was done showed that. And when it comes to muscle building, I have found going plant-based, and there's research to back this up, my recovery has gone, like, it's so much better. The next day, I'm not sore, I'm energetic, I'm good to go back in the gym because all the inflammation caused by animal products has gone down. Now, I'm not eating as many inflammatory foods and I'm eating a lot of foods that are anti-inflammatory. All plant foods have a lot of antioxidants. So my body's just fighting any inflammation that, 
exercise causes. Um, it just, it just, it's been an amazing experience. So one, you don't need animal products. Two, you don't need as much protein as you need, as you think. And, uh, and three, uh, your recovery time tremendously improves when you're eating plants. You know, that was a great point about how when you're focusing on getting more protein, particularly from animal-based foods, you are sacrificing nutrition in other foods. Oh, that, that I'm having an insurance policy if I have extra protein, but they're not thinking about what they're missing. That's a great point. Great point.